What's up kids and welcome to another episode of Booze History. I'm your professor, Mike Tybe, and now that we're done with the pleasantries, make sure and like and share down below, and that way your friends can be in the know. Today's episode is going to be on Tito's Vodka, the spirit that came out of nowhere to become everyone's not too expensive, needed for a party, go-to vodka. We'll be right back after this. There is actually a Tito behind Tito's. His name is Bert Bertito Beverage. That's right, his last name is actually Beverage. He got the nickname of Bertito from his Latin caregivers as a child and the name kinda just stuck. Tito was making vodka as a side hobby for his friends, completely illegal in all countries in the world except for one don't try this at home. While playing polo, going to school for geology and geophysics, trying his hand in oil mining, and even a little bit of real estate before Tito's actually took off. He might as well have been making moonshine, seeing that his first still was made out of two Dr. Pepper kegs and a turkey frying rig. Now that he's got a multi-acre distillery, the claim of handmade on the label has been called into question in a couple of court battles. Along with the handmade being on the label, another misconception is pot still vodka, which is not physically possible seeing that a pot still can only get alcohol up to about 80%. Whereas you need columns, like what he did with his two Dr. Pepper kegs originally, to get it up over 90% for it to become vodka. Corn was definitely picked on purpose, maybe because he actually thinks that it's smoother, maybe to show how American Tito's was, probably not because it's gluten free, but the timing on that was excellent. Tito's is said to be distilled six times. However, distillation times in a vodka actually doesn't mean anything. It ends up going through a column, and a lot of times what they do is just count the amount of windows or plates that are in the column, and then say that it was distilled six times, or 13 times, or 20 times. What really matters is how it tastes to you, and how it tastes to your pocketbook. Tito really, 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 really loves dogs. He's involved with a company in charge of spaying and neutering uh, dogs, as well as the ASPCA. Company website even sells products for vodka dog people. The label was made by a vegetarian art student. I hope he liked corn. And although now the company's worth billions of dollars and makes over a million bottles of vodka a week, it started in a huge amount of debt, something to the tune of $90,000. The two lawsuits that I talked about are in both California and Florida, and they pertain to the word handmade on the labeling of Tito's because it's neutral grain spirit in mass production that comes to the facility and then is turned into Tito's Vodka through redistillation, um, proofing, and bottling. Unfortunately, this is par for the course in the alcohol industry and the nice thing to see is when a company at least distills their neutral grain spirit again before they just proof, which means watered down and rebottle the product. Thanks for watching another episode of Booze History. Check us out on the socials under Booze Networks, like our Instagram so you can see what I'm making right now, whether it's a cocktail, some alcohol, or even just some dried fruit. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Over and out.